All right, it's an honor to be here. Steve Burns here. Uh, I'm going to share my website with you and we'll share a little bit more as to who I am and why I'm here. I'm a digital artist. I'm an author as well. I'm going to share with you a little bit of what I do as an artist and author. This is my website, chromolution.com. And um, on the website, uh, you can go to the galleries. I want to share with you a little bit about my work. So, I am the president of the San Diego Photoshop Users Group as well as an instructor. I teach at three colleges, Otis College Arts and Design, Santa Monica College, and Golden West College. I've been doing digital imaging for decades. And I started as a photographer and seating in, in chairs where you guys are seating, watching presentations. I went to school, I achieved my certificate in photography, went professional, did a lot of my weddings, did a lot of commercial and special effects photography. But then I became enamored with digital. So I started Photoshop in version, I would say, 2.5, right before layers. And what I'm going to share with you today is an unusual look into utilizing video within your Photoshop program. Now, let me ask you guys this. How many people, what level of photography do you believe you are at? Let me say beginning, be, beginning level, raise your hands. Okay, about almost half. Intermediate, raise your hands. About a, almost half. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so how about advanced, raise your hands. I've got one, two, three, four, four, five. Okay. All right. Now, I'm going to ask you some questions. How many people consider themselves beginning level in Photoshop? Raise your hands. About a quarter of the room. Interesting. Intermediate in Photoshop? Another quarter. Advanced? So some of you guys are lying. <laughs> okay. All right. So, all right. What I'm going to share with you and, and what I'm sharing with you now is some of my, my fine art that I do in Photoshop. But this presentation is going to pretty much encompass beginning, intermediate, and advanced. You're not, this is not a class. Don't worry about taking notes because I'm recording it. So what I want you to do is inspire you. What type of photography do you do? Shout it out. So what was that? I can't hear you. Food photography? Landscape? Somebody else? What was that? Somebody else over here? Oh, portraits? Yeah. People, places, and things. People, places, and things. Race cars. Race cars. Underwater? Very good. Are any commercial photographers, like product photography? One over here? Okay. You guys have an incredible landscape here. And I have to thank Photocon uh, for allowing me to be a presenter. It's a, it's a great honor to be here. And I'm hoping that what I'm going to share with you guys is, go is going to be inspiring. Let me share with you a little bit more. Uh, my Chromeillusion.com is my website. I also have Behance site. Now, who here has a subscription with Adobe? Right? So everybody is aware that you have access to Behance, right? Every, does everybody here, who does not have a Behance site? Raise your hand. Okay, get it. It's so easy to do. Take your work, put it up there. It's your portfolio to the world as to who you are as artists. And that's where I'm going to be teaching you today. I'm also one of Wacom's lead pro artists. I'm the guy that's sitting in places like Disney and DreamWorks to share with them on how to actually utilize their products. And that's actually what I'm working with today. It's the, it's the Mobile Studio Pro. It's a, it's a standalone Windows 10 computer with all of Wacom's touch capabilities. Now, after we're done, and if you think you're interested in learning more from me, then when you go to my website, Provolution.com, you click up here on Workshops, and I'll show you this afterwards too, and click on the hands-on classes there. You have an intermediate, beginning, and advanced Photoshop class along with the Yosemite Master Class in Death Valley, which you have the option to take. And I'm in San Diego, but it doesn't matter because if you're online, it's live and interactive. You get microphone, headset, speak to me, speak to us. It's live interactive. We see each other's screens. Okay. All right. Let's talk about this concept of video, video in Photoshop. 
Now, oh, it looks like I'm going to be a couple in the seat here, and there is another seat there, and one more right up here. So we have seats for three people. Okay, good, cool. Oh, we got two more up here, actually. Yeah, come on up. Welcome to the class. It's an absolutely packed house. All right, thank you for being here. All right, let's go have some fun. So, I can't say enough about playing with your tools, whether you're a photographer, a painter, a sculptor. Your creativity, your uniqueness comes out, to you, comes out from your ability to play. And that's what we're gonna do today. So now, you guys have probably seen millions of presentations on how to do video in Photoshop. You've probably seen it on YouTube, you've probably seen it in, in, in various uh, um, um, functions such as, such as Photocon. But I'm gonna do something, hopefully, do something a little bit different. All right, I'm inside of Bridge. In Bridge, I've got some options here. I'm gonna go ahead and, and open up. Let's go take a look here. I'm going to open up one of my files um, and I'm also going to share with you some of the videos. Let's go ahead and open up this one here. I'm going to double click it in Bridge. Are you guys using Bridge to actually work in, work in Photoshop? Good. Use it all the time. All right. Um, some of you are probably using Lightroom, right? Okay. As an artist, I don't like more than two programs open. It's taking up my RAM. So I would either export them out through Lightroom and shut right, right, Lightroom down or just go through Bridge where Bridge is not required to import anything. All right, so here's a shot. Um, this, is, this is going to be my, be my base shot here. And we're gonna play with, with, with this a little bit. I'm gonna hit my F key, to go to my full screen mode. And let's kind of like explore the possibilities. Now this is a shot that I took in the Central Coast over in the Bay Area. I also did a video of it. Now we all have video cameras. You all have the, the ability to do video. So what I'm gonna do, let's go back to bridge. I'm using Command or Control, Shift and O is my toggle, the toggle between bridge and Photoshop. So if I come up to the top here, let's get this out of the way. Turn this off. I have some video content here. Let's go ahead and make, make this a little larger so you can see it. And let's go to the very top. And right over here is one of my MOV files. If I can find them in there, all right. So let's see, make sure I'm in the right dynamic integration. There we go. Let's go up here. There's MOVs. All right, now I'm gonna grab that one. We're gonna tap on it. And what I've done is I've taken several seconds of video. So whichever, whatever shot I decide to use, I've got video content of that as well. I have another one. I think I'm going to use this one right here. I think this one to the left is going to integrate better. If I, I'm going to pull, go over here and kind of mm -hmm. minimize bridge a little bit. Just pull it down. And I'm going to take that video. Oh, yes. Am I in the way you're going to have? Oh, okay. Very good. I'm going to move out of the way. I'm going to go all the way to the side. <laughs> I enjoy my life. <laughs> but the back of your head's wonderful. Back of my head is wonderful? Oh, thank you. We can come back anytime you like. <laughs> all right, so, all right, here we go. We got bridge here. I'm going to pull it down. Oops, I kind of hit the wrong thing. Let's go back to bridge. And make sure I'm clicking on the right thing. Well, I'm trying to click on the right thing. Looks like bridge is freezing up on me here. So let's go do something different. Let's go over here. And how about if we, um, I guess we can do a place linked, couldn't we? So if you bring in anything in Photoshop, I like to open it as a smart object. Let's see if it'll work this way. And I'm going to go over to my desktop. And the reason I'm doing this is because sometimes... And let me go back because sometimes bridge will have a little bit of a problem. It'll freeze up on me. Now, anybody have problems with bridge freezing up on them from time to time? Yeah, it's, it's, it's frustrating, isn't it? All right, so if I click and drag it and put it on over, there it is. Okay, now it's acting right. Now, there's my object. Now, what I did, and I'm going to turn it off and on. 
what I did was I held the shift key down when I dragged it over. Now that's going to center it. Now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to kind of adjust it. I'm going to keep it right there. That's going to be my background. Now that's a video file. If you notice here in the bottom right hand corner, it's a smart object. So as a smart object, it encompasses the actual video. Now, I, I brought it in with the original back here because I love the lighting of this particular file. I'm gonna hit Command or Control Zero to pop that to full view. And I wanted to kind of match the lighting to the one in the back. So what I'm gonna do is because it's a smart object, any type of adjustments I add to it is gonna become a smart filter. So if I access my image menu, adjustments, and let's go ahead and use levels, uh, not levels, but curves. <coughs> How many people here, who does not understand curves? Raise your hand. Okay, a quarter of the class. The rest of them probably don't either. They're not gonna raise their hand. <laughs> <laughs> so we take a look at this. This is our histogram. So what this is doing is it's sharing with us our, our 256 possible shades of gray that we're gonna be working in in your digital imaging program. What I'm going to do is I can I can I can manipulate this gray. I can take the grays, the, the bottom the bottom horizontal edge represents the values that exist in your file. The the the, the uh, vertical represents what you're going to alter those shades into. So if I say go to the black and I want it to turn all the black black values in this image to this particular shade of gray, I just simply take that dot and just put it on that shade of gray and it will become that shade of gray. So all of your 256 possible values exist on this line. So as I move the line up or down, I'm adjusting those values up and down. It's like a light switch, on and off and on and off. So what I wanna do is I wanna brighten this up just a little bit. See that? So that was why I wanted to use that background one as, an, as, as, an, as a template, so to speak, to get the lighting right. Now, I'm going to come over here, I'm going to say, okay, that's, that's fairly good enough, but not good enough. I want to do more to this. So, I'm going to take the file, and we have something in Photoshop, because when, when people who are new to Photoshop, Adobe created this thing called Adobe Camera Raw, which is designed for your raw files. We can access those raw files as a layer, and especially if you have a smart object, we can always go back and edit that. So it becomes a non-destructive process. So filter, camera raw, or I can utilize my shortcut, shift control A. Now once you learn a new shortcut, make sure you use it every time. If you don't, you're gonna forget. Okay, so I'm gonna hit camera raw. Give it a moment to think. There it is. And I'm gonna make some adjustments here. One is, a lot of the shading, the tonal values in the rock is too block, it's blocking up my detail, right? So we're dealing with shadows, midtones, and highlights. So I'm gonna come right over here. I have an option for shadows. I wanna take these lower values and I wanna bring them up in value or brighter so I can start to see details. There we go. Once that's done, I wanna add a little bit of sharpness to it. So Adobe has given us a new filter in Adobe Camera Raw called Texture, which is wonderful. That's basically altering the sharpness in your higher tones or higher values. You're closer to your whites. So if I bring that over, and actually let's go ahead and hit Control Plus and zoom in closer. Bring that over a little bit, it starts to sharpen a little bit. All right? Can you see that? Now I'm just doing some um, basic editing, and then we're going to get into the video integration part, the real fun stuff. Clarity is adding more contrast to your mid-tone information. Because as you start to mess with your various values, your mid-tone information starts to you know, get a little out of order. So we're going to just add a little sharp, there we go, that's a little better. All right, let's click OK. Let's let it process, there it is. Now, we got our image. That's a video, guys. All right, it's a video on a smart object. Now, yes. Okay, so excellent question. Now her question is, these are the same controls that we have in Lightroom, so how are they different? They're not. <laughs> 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 They're not. 
ACR and Lightroom is essentially the exact same thing. The only difference is, is that Lightroom has a database management system put into it where Adobe Camera Raw doesn't. In other words, it will remember everything you do to your files because there's a database called a catalog. In Adobe Camera Raw, we don't need to worry about that. I can edit the image right where it sits on the hard drive. I don't need to import them in to create the database. Does that make sense? Okay. That's good. That's now, don't sidetrack me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> just joking. So ask questions. Let's get a dialogue going, okay? So if anybody has any questions, stop me. Just shout it out. All right. Now, let's create something. Let's do something funny. Fun. Let's go back to here. Let's go get another video. Ooh, you know what? I like that video right there. Let's drag it on over. Give it a moment. Cool. All right. Let's say I want this video to be down here. Now, it's kind of hard to see how these some of the elements are going to be placed in here. So I might come up here to my, uh, my layered blend modes, get it out of normal. Maybe I'll put it under multiply like so. Now, it may be, or maybe we try something different, might be easier to see. Let's try overlay. Um, or maybe let's, let's try darken. Maybe that'll work a little better. There we go. Okay, there we go. So. I want to kind of get a sense as to where I want, I want to change this foreground information. So both of these are video. The water is coming in. I want to blend those two together. So when this becomes a smart object, I can treat it like a standard layer. I can add any controls, any controls whatsoever, um, whether they're special effects or, or color or tonal adjustments. So I'm just changing the video to darken, or the layer to darken, just so I can kind of get an idea where I want to place it. I might go ahead and make it a little larger. I'll hold down the Ultra Option key on the resize from the center, make it a little bit larger, and it's going off the bottom of the page a little bit, but that's okay. I'm going to hit Enter to make my changes. I'm going to come over here and turn it right back to normal. And let's go ahead and Command minus, bring it down a little bit, pull it on over. Hit my C key for well, for what? Crop. crop, right? C for crop. Pull it down a little bit, and and I can adjust my perspective just a little bit, right about there. That's what I want. All right, I want. I definitely want to change out the sky. So let's turn off this top one real quick, and let's get rid of the sky um, of the layer right beneath it. And again, it's a video. It's a smart object. I'm going to turn the very bottom one off so we can see what, we, what we're working with. And if I go over to this smart object, what tool will I use to select that sky? The key to mastering Photoshop is mastering selections. Selections and math are exactly the same thing. The key to mastering Photoshop is mastering selections. Selections and math are exactly the same thing. All right, I'm gonna grab a tool here, Magic Wand. That might work the best here. So I'm gonna make sure I'm in the correct layer because Photoshop's working in layers. These are video layers, once again. Target the sky, boom, done. It did a pretty good job. Now, I chose that tool because I can see the sky was fairly of limited color and tonal range. So it was gonna, it was gonna target it pretty quickly. Now, let's go over here and give it a layer mask. The key to mastering Photoshop is mastering selections. Selections and masks are exactly the same thing. If I have a selection and give it a mask, it will honor that selection right here on the bottom of your layers panel, third icon from the left, click it, it created a mask. So if I hit Alt click on it, you can see what it's done. What's in white reveals, what's in black is gonna conceal it. All right. Now, let's go Alt or Option, click on the mask and see the image again. I want the blacks where the whites are and, where the, and, and the whites where the blacks are. What do I do? What was that? I can't hear. Invert. Oh, invert. Right. Invert the colors. Not Command-Shift-I. Command-I. Command-Shift-I is, is inverse selection. Command-I is inverse your mask. Okay, so now we have the sky is gone. All right, let's go play. All right, fine. Let's start thinking about big painters. Let's go grab this one. Okay, um, I love the foreground and I don't like the background. 
So let's see how I'm going to integrate this. I'm going to target this here, target the image, give it a layer mask, click it. Notice now, keep in mind this black is white by default. Now I'm going to, I'm going to get a brush. I'm going to hit the B key for the brush on the keyboard. Now, there's a shortcut for resizing your brush. What is it? Excellent. Brackets, right? So look at the P key on, the, on, on, the, on your keyboard. On the right-hand side of the P key, bracket to the right makes your brush bigger. Bracket to the left makes your brush smaller. What's the new way of doing it? You, 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 use the what? The Alt key. The Alt key. On the PC, Alt, right-click, resizes. Subpixel resize down hard up soft. Okay, I'm recording this, so you don't have to write it down. So down hard up soft, right and left, and I can read. And it's like it's like single pixel smooth movement, whereas the bracket to the right and left is jumping several pixels up or down. All right, so keep that in mind. Now let's go work like a painter. My palette in one hand, my brush is in the other. I have my walking pen in this hand. I told Photoshop, and I'm gonna share, I'm gonna share with you where I did it. If I if the brush activated the fourth icon from the left on the very top of your options bar, I have a panel for my brush. I told it to go to transfer, which is actually controlling my opacity, and it allowed it to use for opacity and flow to use pin pressure. So I can control how I'm going to blend these things in together. So I'm going to start painting things together. All right. So once that is done, once I have this set, I have to make sure that I save this brush. If I don't, I'll lose it. If I save it under new brush option, click it, call it whatever you want. I've already done it just to, just, just to make you aware it's there. Once you have it, you can utilize that brush for any of your painting tools in Photoshop. And it's going to show up right here always the very last one in your brush panel and that's going to be your third icon from your left. Any questions yet? No? Am I like that good? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, let's go play. White reveals and black does what? Conceals. Hit the X key to switch my black and white. And let's start to paint it away. Paint it away, paint it away. Now, gently allow your subconscious to work. Allow your heart to kind of, and eye to tell you, oh, maybe you want to keep that, or maybe you don't want to keep that, or we're going to bring, bring a little bit of this in there. I'm using the brush. I'm not using fancy smancy techniques to make a mask. Think like a painter. Use your brush. Pull it on in there and start gently integrating things together making a decision what's going to stay what's what's not going to stay maybe i'll bring in some of this back area yeah bring the brush down now see that little shortcut i'm using i have it set to a single top button on my walking pen all right do we have time to show you let's see yeah we do i'll show you how to do it so, walk and pin. This is critical. If you're photographers, you need to have this. You really do. He, he, he's agreeing with me. He's going like, yeah, yeah, you do. They're inexpensive. Now, I'm using the computer. You can buy the pad, all right, which will connect to your Mac or your PC or your Linux system. Get it. The Intuos Pro, that's what you want. Not the Intuos, but the Intuos Pro. All right, enough, enough promoting. Let's go, let's go play. <laughs> Walking will be happy with me now. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna just adjust my brush size to decide what stays, what go. Maybe some of that that those waves that come around that rock there. Maybe some will just brush up along the edge of this rock like so. Um, maybe I want to keep that back in. I'm gonna turn the eyeball on and off to kind of see where things are. Okay, I might uh, decide to to, to kind of you know make the brush a little bigger and hit the X key. And maybe bring, maybe bring some of that back. Alright, maybe I'll do something that's just, just a little bit back. Not too much. X key. Come back. With, so I'm painting right on here. Now what you guys will be doing, you're painting right on the pad. But it's, it's, it's the same workflow. Alright. 
Okay, that's basically what I've got going there with those two. So let's save this because if I crash, I'm going to be really ticked off. So Command Shift to S, and I've got dynamic video integration, and let's go put this under the final video, and I'll put this under class tutorial. I'll just I'll just put uh, T U T, okay, and save it. I saved it as a TIFF file, a TIFF or PSD, it doesn't matter. PSD is basically a TIFF file format. All right, now, Spring in the Sky. Man, it's kind of blank, but it's, it's kind of boring back there. Let's go back over here, open this up. Let's see, do I have any sky images in here? I should. I know I do. There they are. Let's see. What should I use? Well, the orange one. This one here? Yeah. All right. Okay. Let's drag it on in. Automatically makes it a smart object. Where's it positioned in layers? Where do I need it to be? Excellent. Very good, guys. So I'm going to bring this down below there. Notice that what it did, hitting the V key on the keyboard gets the shortcut for the move tool. It gives me a smart object automatically, which is nice. All right, now we need to make some adjustments here because now my lighting is going to change a little bit. Um, let's go Command minus. Let's go and enlarge that layer. Command T. There are no particular, um, you know. You know what? Let's do it this way. This is going to be fun. Alt key. Holding the Alt key allows me to drag in, right? Hold the shift key allows me to distort it a little bit. Okay. We've got motion video on there. And I'm gonna when I pull in the timeline, you're gonna see how all this works together. But in addition, I want to animate those clouds. They're looking at me like what? <laughs> <laughs> I love it when I get that. It's gonna get that effect. All right, so I'm going to hit minus, bring it way down for a reason, because hold the Alt key, shift, and stretch it out like that, because I'm going to animate the clouds, right? So I, wanted, I want the clouds to look like blowing across the scene, so I had to make it real small so I can kind of grab the darn thing and bring it over. Now I need to kind of hold the shift key to, to, to constrain it to that one um, axis and bring it over here and say we're going to start the animation right there. <laughs> Never thought of that, did you? <laughs> right? Now hit enter. Command zero pops at the full view. <laughs> Isn't that cool? <laughs> right? Oh man. All right, so Oh, we got plenty of time too. All right. So now, all right. We got plenty of time. So let's let's work this. Let's think about creatively how this should work visually. Um, let me go. I have the background sky. I, I can bring. It, there we go. I want to bring it down a little bit. There we go. I'm going to go hit Command T again and hold the Shift key and just bring this up a little bit. Oops, sorry. That was too far up. And what I can do is I can use the arrow key to nudge it down that way too. It might be easier. So there. And I'm going to grab this shift key just to stretch it out a little bit. So I make sure everything's going to be covered up back there. All right. Now. So. Hmm. Let's think about this visually. So photography or craft photography comes from the master painters. They come from the master sculptors. They understood perspective. They understood depth. And do we have depth here? One person says, says some people says yes. Do we have depth here? I disagree. So if you're in the landscape, say for example, Death Valley, since I got a Death Valley class coming in, and you set your camera on a tripod, and you look way back in the landscape, what do you see happening? Excellent haze, atmospheric haze. All right, you don't have any there. Let's make some. Let's make some atmospheric haze. So, 
All right, we got this very sharp delineated line and we're gonna actually paint the haze in. Again, we're thinking like artists. What I'm hoping you're gonna take away from this class is that you're gonna to start to think like painters. You're gonna start going to look at actual paintings, painters work and apply it to how you're gonna approach photography. All right, never be a slave to the image from your camera. Allow it to be an inspiration to where you want to go. When Ansel Adams created his work, he did not recreate what he saw in the landscape. Who does not know who Ansel Adams is? Raise your hand. Yeah, it's the younger guys. <laughs> right. Right. So, so Ansel Adams, my, I guess my, my answer to you would be look him up. <laughs> All right. So, so Ansel did not recreate what he saw. He used values to recreate greater depth than what the human eye was able, able to perceive. If your eyeball is able to see good contrast and detail, there's something wrong with your eyes. Your eyes are seeing extreme, continuous, tonal range, mid-tone information. I can look in the dark shadow of his lens and see detail. I can look in the bright whites and the light and I can see detail. Your camera can't pick that up. So we're gonna recreate what, at, what nature does. We're gonna create that atmospheric haze back there. So we're gonna look at the background. Um, we have um, kind of a, a, um, a orange sunset going on. So we're gonna start creating the orange glow of the sunset. So let's, let's start here. Let's go to the top, let's go to this foreground. And let's add some more warmth to that. Now, it's a smart object, right? Some of you guys are probably used to adjustment layers. But because it's a smart object, I can, it affords me the ability to go through right directly to our adjustments, standard adjustments, access our curves, and I can apply it as a smart filter. It'll automatically become a smart filter. If I take this, now, what do you guys use for color correcting in Photoshop? Just shout it out. What? Color balance? Or hue and saturation? Right. Get rid of them. Use curves. Curves give you ability to manipulate every single 256 shades of gray or color, RGB separately. So now I'm going to apply color correction, tonal correction to this video. You guys have forgotten you, these are videos we're working with, right? Because they're in smart objects. So um, let's go over to the red. And we're dealing with the foreground. That's the top layer. I'm going to bring this up so you guys can see, see it here in the foreground. And I'm going to give it just a little bit, yeah, a little bit of, a little bit of red. Give it that, that sunset glow. A little bit of yellow. Yellow is the opposite of blue. So if I target the blue, if I bring blue up, it gives us more blue. If I bring blue below its medium range here, the medium line, it gives you the opposite yellow. That's how you color correct. That gives you the ability to color correct in shadows, mid-tones, or highlights by putting, put a dot, putting dots on here. Much better way to work. I'm gonna take these other two off. Just click and drag it right off here. And I guess we can't have the lights off, huh? So I'll keep going while they're looking for that. So I'm going to just bring it down just a little bit. That was too much yellow I added in there. Just a little bit. Just a teeny bit. That's better? It would be nice if these were off, actually. Kind of go back. Yeah. All right, so while they're working, so I, I basically warmed it up, add a little bit of yellow, now it's starting to take on the nature of that sunset we have back there. Now, let's go ahead and commit my changes. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. All right, now, we turn that off and on. All those changes becomes a smart filter and, it, and it's only being applied to this particular layer. Now, Let's go down to the next one. Go down to the bottom one. Let's give it a little bit more warmth as well. So, shortcut for, for curves is what? Control M as in man. 
You don't have to write it down, I'm recording this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And I'm gonna give it to Rick, and Rick's gonna give it out to, 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 to the whole conference. So I'm gonna hit Command and Control M for curves, or you can do your standard image adjustment and go to your curves. Let's go over here. Let's make a now. I'm gonna make a, an adjustment here, a quick little adjustment of adding a little bit more yellow. Pull out the blue slightly. See that? Starting to warm it up for just a little bit. And let's go add a little bit of red from the to get that orange to the sunset and just pull it up slightly. There we go. There we go. That's all we need. How does that look? Is, is the client happy? Okay, good. Let's go ahead now. Now I'm gonna do something different. According to the rules of perspective when we're dealing with atmospheric haze, as artists, as anything in the background is gonna get really hazy, but what happens to the color in that haze? It, it what? It softens, but in what manner? It disappears. In other words, what that means is it goes closer to medium gray. The color diminishes, it desaturates. Okay, so let's, let's think about, and then of course, how it diminishes and, and, and what color range it diminishes depends on the lighting. The lighting is gonna be a yellow, reddish, orange from that sunset back there. So let's create our haze. Let's go right down, create a brand new layer. Let's go right beneath our sunset here. And let's see, my sunset, that's the sunset, there we go. I'm gonna put it right, yeah, I think this will work right there. Right above the sunset, create a brand new layer and I'm gonna to go to a brush, hit the B key for a brush. That's my standard soft brush. Let's give it some properties that's gonna make it look like I'm painting haze or fog. All right, come right over here, go to my shape dynamics. Let's go to my brush tip shapes first and give it some, some distance from one another. Let's next go over to my shape and details, my, my, my shape uh, dynamics. And let's tell it to alter the, the shape of the, of the brush over the length of the stroke. Next, I'm going to tell it to go to scatter. And I'm going to tell it to scatter. Actually, if I bring, I'm going to tighten this up a little bit. Go back to brush tip shape. Tighten up the spacing just a little bit so you can see what's going on. Now, what I'm going to do next is go to scatter and give it a little bit of scattering. Scatter it just a little bit. Then I'm gonna say give it a little bit more count. So a little bit, it goes, spit out a little more information as we, over the length of the stroke. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Are all these um, characters that you're doing right now, are those in Photoshop or because you have big whopping? Okay, so the question is, all of the characters that I'm applying, is this gonna be unique to the stylus or can I do it with a standard brush if I'm using a mouse? You can do this with a standard brush as, you, as you're using a mouse. The only difference is you're not going to be able to use your pressure because you, you, if you're using a, a mouse, it's like basically painting with a brick, right? You have to constantly come up here and adjust your opacity. With the walking stylus, the pressure that I push down on my pad will, uh, will allow me to decide where that opacity, how it's going to be applied which definitely revolutionizes your workflow and makes you, it puts you in better connection to how we traditionally do things. Walk them. Wa is harmony, com is computer. Harmony with computer to how we would traditionally do art. Right? So now, there it is. Let's go back to my brush tip shape. Tighten it up a little more like so. Now what I'm gonna do is tell it to you to make sure that transfer is turned on so I've got pressure sensitivity. Now, once I make those adjustments, I need to save that brush or I'm gonna lose it, right? So, drop menu, top right corner, new brush, call it whatever you want, make sure that this is the only option checked. If you have this one checked only, it's gonna allow you to apply that brush to all of your brushes in your system. If you have include tool tips, it's only gonna allow you to use that brush for that tool only, right? So I'm gonna uncheck that so I can have it available for my eraser tool or my other painting tools and so forth. So click OK. Where did it put the brush? All right, right click. Always the very last one. 
Okay. All right. To get rid of this, I'm going to tap anywhere. And um, good. Plenty of time left. Okay. Let's let's go get this done. So I'm going to um, create some haze. So how about if I'm going to alt click there, um, get an initial color. That's a brownish haze. I'm not liking it. Let's bring it up closer to that little warm color. I can I can even neutralize it to the left or add more saturation to the right. More density to the bottom, less density, more saturation to the top. So I'm going to adjust it real quick and let's go ahead and paint. Let's see how it works. I want a nice soft edge brush. I don't want a hard, real soft. And I might even just bring this down a little bit. Even though I've got pressure sensitivity applied, oftentimes Photoshop is pretty, pretty sensitive. It'll apply a lot more than I want it to. I want more control. So now I'm going to just gently, gently start to bring it across back there. Okay? I'm going to command minus, space bar, bring it over. And I'm going to bring it down a little bit and just gently bring it across. Okay. Now, filter, blur, what? Gaussian blur. Just to soften it up a little bit. There we go. See? All right. Now, that atmospheric haze is also going to affect that foreground. That means I need to reposition it. So why don't we just take this layer... Command J to duplicate it. Let's take that layer and reposition it so that I'm going to affect the foreground information. So bring it to the top, and I think I want to go all the way to the top there. There we go, see? Take that, Command T, just to save time, Alt and Shift. Alt resizes toward, Shift allows you to, res allows you, allows you to distort and bring it down to kind of change it's going to get to a lower level um, fog. And then that lower level fog, I can apply curves to it. All right? So I can come right over to here. Image, adjustment, curves. Right? And I can make tonal adjustments to that. I think I want to bring it up a little bit. There we go. See how we get a little bit of a lower haze there? All right. So the last thing I want to do here is if I go back to the original fog, Let's bring out the saturation a little bit. It's a little bit too strong. So command to control U and just desaturate. There we go. Just a little bit. Okay. All right. Now, I guess the last thing I might like to do is, actually, if we're done, we won't have much more time. So um, now we're going to animate this. Yes. Good question. I yes. didn't use any opacity. Okay. Um, the question is, he noticed I didn't apply opacity to my layers. I actually did. What did I? How did I do it? Pressure sensitivity. What was that? Pressure. Pressure sensitivity, and Gaussian blur. Right. So I so I didn't apply a full stroke, a full pressure. I I, I applied light pressure. That controlled my opacity. That's why you need this pen. <laughs> Just saying. All right, command to control S. Let's go ahead and save this little guy here. And let's actually see what we're doing. What, it, does Steve really know what the hell he's doing here? All right, I want to do one last thing. And that is right back here, I have my um, the background image with the, the light tower. I want that to actually go back in the haze because if this area is going to be hazy, that tower is also going to be hazy, right? So why not take one of these layers, I'll go ahead and grab this one, duplicate it, bring it to the top right above that tower and make it a clipping path, clip it together so it only affects that tower. So now, if I, what I could do is this. I can hit Command J to intensify again. All right, take these three, merge them together. Actually, I'm gonna have to, un, I'm gonna have to un, unclip it first. 
grab these two. Now, this is where I'm going to have to apply opacity. So right click, merge the layers together, done. And I'm going to clip it to the tower. V key for the move tool, position it how I want it. And then from here, bring my opacity down there. I was starting to get a sense of depth back there. Um, and I guess the last thing, I, I'm being overcritical right now. The last thing I need to do is probably duplicate this layer one more time. I'm going to go to the bottom one, Command T. And I think what I'll do is I'll bring it on up to really, and then bring down the opacity. So it looks like it's a nice, nice smooth haze going on back there. How's that look? Better? Okay, come on, let's get now. Let's go do this. Let's go do this. Let's get the video action going on here. Now, okay, what is this video in Photoshop he's been advertising? Window menu, timeline. Bring up the timeline. Create video timeline. It's going to create a video from all of these layers. Okay? Create video timeline, there it is. Okay, now let's uh, make it a little smaller. If I start to tap here, watch the water. Let's see it there. See that? Now, I've already rendered one out for you. I'm not going to render this out because we won't have time and something might crash. So, just not going to go there. So I'm just going to tap on it so you can kind of imagine what's going on there. So we got the water going on. That's two videos integrated. Now we got those that sky to, integrate, to animate, right? So I'm going to kind of put this back over here. Let's go find the sky. See, in the same I don't know, layer, uh, you know, location, there's my sky, right? Now, if we drop it down the far left-hand corner, you see a little arrow there. We drop it down, we have some transform options. If I click on the hourglass symbol, and that's what that is, there's a little, little hourglass symbol, click it, it gives you a little diamond right, you know, right to that left-hand corner. And that's telling you, you've got a keyframe. What's the keyframe? Who does not understand keyframe? Raise your hand. Okay, if you're an animator, right, and what digital software does is it actually creates what's called in-betweens, tweening for short. Like, like in Flash, right? So if your character is standing like this, and then in the next frame, or next few frames, you want them to go to this, the software will create all those in-betweens to do this. So those major changes and functions are called keyframe. Keyframe one, keyframe two. And then in between those key keyframes, key tweening, it creates that motion. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's what that's doing. So on frame here, now keep in mind, right here is my video. That's why that one's longer. Let's bring this all the way up. This one's longer because the actual video is longer. That means I don't have a choice but to take this and to bring it here and say that's going to be the end of the video. Okay, so from here, let's just go to my... There it is, right there. Now, with that one there, Command, let's see, V key, Command T, go to the end, click the playhead right about there. Well, actually, I can't do it yet. Okay, click the playhead there. Now, with Shift held down, Move this over, and again, like that. Okay, you get the point. So now, if I click, you can watch it. See, it kind of went off a little bit. There it is. See, so we got that. We got that sky moving. Now, to create your video, file. Export, render video. Tell it where you want it to render. 
you want the H.264 format, and then you're good to go. Here, now, I've already created a video from this. Let's go maximize this. Let's see if I can play it. And let's see, video integration. Huh, okay, final videos. And there it is, okay, here. There it is. That's one I, did, I, I rented for you already. That's it. Yes. Bigger. Oh, it's um. Yeah, I gotta get. I gotta get out of here to do it. And Photocon. And that's gonna be about uh, digital video integration. Final video. And what we're gonna do is go to. Well, we'll do that one. That's another one. Isn't that cool? Oh, I didn't, I didn't talk to, to keep. Oh, sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> I didn't keep looping. Repeat. That's another version, but you can see. They're two different videos, different sky, but you get the point. Isn't that cool? With one movie sky? Well, no, I didn't. I, I, I did. Well, hold on a minute. I might have. I might have. Just might have it. Right. Ah, wait a minute. There. Got it. There it is. That's the version I did last night. I didn't render out the one we did, did today because it would take too long. Let's tell that one to repeat also. How long would it take to render? It depends on your video. Depends on how long your video is. How um, the file, these, when you render them out, they're, MP, they're MPEG files. They're not that big. That's it. Thank you for coming.